Okay, boys and girls. I need to just let me take a sip of water before we get started. Mmm. That is warm. Welcome back. Yes, this was supposed to be on Friday, but if you could hear the bass in my voice, stop me if you heard this before. I'm under the weather. It's that time of year. That time of year being November to March. I get sick a lot. And this has not been a good few days for your boy. However, <clears throat> however, we persevere and push through. So, yes, this is supposed to be the Friday pod. It is now going to be the Sunday morning pod before the game. So as I make my prediction for this game and get into all the subjects, the subjects being, as I look at my notes here, Dion to the Raiders, potentially the QB mandate for the first pick that we have, Aiden's next couple games, I'm going to get into the prediction and to the comments that I picked out to read from the last video. I need you to just hit the like button and subscribe because it'll make me feel better. It'll be like chicken soup for the virtual soul, if you will. We persevere, we push through. Thank you so much for clicking on my face and watching. My name is Rodney. Let's get into it. And I want to start off real fast with something that happened, I believe, Thursday night. There was a report that came out that's linking, you guessed it, Deion Sanders, ever heard of him, to the Las Vegas Raiders. It doesn't feel real, even though there are reports on it. The most tangible thing for Deion to the Raiders is Shador, right? And Shiloh, to a lesser extent, but Shador. Like, oh, if we draft Shador, it's logical that Deion wants to come next, right? And we'll hire Deion, and it'll be like the big dynamic duo, whatever, dynamic trio with Shiloh or Travis Hunter. And it makes sense that that's a thing that people would be talking about, and now people like Albert Breer are talking about it and giving it a little bit more validity. I'm not here to tell you the validity of all this. I don't have insider reports. I'm not Hondo Carpenter, Vic Tafer. I, I'm, I'm not in the building. I'm not asking the questions. I don't have relationships with any of these people. And when the John Gruden thing started to materialize when we hired him the second time, that didn't feel real either, but then that happened. So, look, stranger things, right? <clears throat> Here's what I will say right off the bat in terms of giving my opinion on if I want Dion to be the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's going to be a big, fat no. And let me, let me explain myself. It feels just classic Raiders to consistently go outside the box in terms of getting a head coach. If you look at our history of hiring head coaches, if you go back to 2014, it started Dennis Allen, Jack Del Rio. That's kind of the progression, right? It went big-time defensive coordinator, young buck kind of person in Dennis Allen. Then it went to proven-ish head coach from Jack Del Rio, who was the head coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. David Garrard had a little bit of success that didn't really work out, so they did big splash play John Gruden, which didn't work, and then big splash Josh McDaniels, which was outside the box, but not really outside the box, and now we go Antonio Pierce, and it feels like Mark Davis constantly is looking now for that big swing with the next head coach, and that could, look, it's boom or bust. You swing for the fences, you hit a home run, or you strike out. You're not hitting a broken bat single or, or gap double, you know, not swinging for the fences. The problem is, is that Deion Sanders has zero credibility in terms of coaching in the National Football League. And when has, you know, when, if someone please, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this like it hasn't happened. If, if, if anybody has names out there, drop your comments. And like I've said in the last episode and in this, this episode, I'll take comments from this video, questions, comments, concerns, and I'll read them at the end of the next pod, which will be probably Wednesday because on Monday, I'm going to be live on Bleacher Report, which will be that pot. doesn't matter. I digress. Comment below if you have any names that fit this bill. But when is the last time a big-name head coach that has had zero experience coaching in the National Football League has actually worked? And you could even add people who have had coaching experience, like the Jim Harbaugh's of it all. But the problem is the Jim Harbaugh's of it all have had success at the highest levels of college football. Not to say that Colorado is any less or is any better or any worse than Stanford, right? The problem is Deion's had one not great year with Colorado and one good year with Colorado. They're not going to be in the playoff, but still they had a good year this season. 
I just don't know if you're going to move on from Antonio Pierce, which right now I'm leaning toward that not being the best decision. I do think he should get another year, especially if his contract is only two years. I just don't know, especially with the likes of the Ben Johnsons of the world, of the Mike Vrabels, of the Bill Belichicks of the world, that you can really roll the dice and hang your hat on Deion Sanders being able to fix this thing. When I close my eyes, and and close your eyes too if you want to play along at home, and you see Deion Sanders, head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, and you see him at the press conferences, do you see him defending himself or do you see him hyping up the team after they just won the game? In my mind, I see the Raiders making another classic big play splash with this signing and it blowing up in our faces. And I'm not saying I want to play it safe, per se, but I am saying I would like to get somebody that makes a little more sense in the National Football League. We were just complaining about how Antonio Pierce was never a coordinator. He went from position coach to head coach, and he had a meteoric rise, and it went, phew, right? And now it's not looking so great. Where Deion Sanders is the same thing. He has had no coaching experience in the National Football League. He's been at a Division I real school for two years. And it was eh, and then it was better. So I'm I'm not ready to put all my chips into that basket. And to be frank, I'm not drafting Shador Sanders if there's a stipulation that Dion has to be the next head coach. That's not how I run my business. But I am afraid that Mark Davis is going to want to lean that way because, again, with these coaching hires, especially coming off of the Dennis Allens and the Jack Del Rios of it all, I think he wants to swing for the fences. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think swinging for the fences would be Ben Johnson or Bill Belichick. It would not be Deion Sanders, in my opinion. It is such a classic Raiders move to do this. And the classic Raiders move the last 15 years has been to more often than not lose football games. And I'm not about that anymore. So, look, only time will tell if this is, again, is it even real? It feels not. And, look, Deion's come out and said He's happy where he is, and he loves Colorado. Right, but Jim Harbaugh said the same thing about Michigan, and now he's 8-4 and four walking into the playoffs with the Chargers. That's another issue I have is, like, <clears throat> let's say we get rid of Antonio Pierce. This next head coach, whoever it's going to be, has to go up against two times a year, Sean Payton, love him or hate him, top 10 coach in the league. Andy Reid, love him or hate him, best coach in the league. Jim Harbaugh, everywhere he goes, he wins. Probably top 10 coach in the league. Top five, maybe. You're going to have to get somebody that's going to be the next version of these people, whether that is Antonio Pierce or a Ben Johnson or a Mike Vrabel, or you're going to have to go get Bill Belichick to have a chance at out-coaching these guys. Because right now we don't have the talent to outplay them, except for maybe Denver. And Denver seems to be on the rise in terms of talent. And that was a team that had salary cap hell, one of the worst trades of all times with Russell Wilson. They might walk into the playoffs, too. We're going to be this redheaded stepchild, the odd man out. So this next coach can't just be like a rah-rah guy, right? If you're going to keep Antonio Pierce, go get your coordinators. Keep Patrick Graham, keep the Turners if they keep this thing rocking and rolling. If not, go get Ben Johnson or go get a name that's been proven to win games in the league, Bill Belichick or Mike Vrabel, not necessarily in that order. So that's where I stand on that. Let me know your comments on that whole thing. Before I get into the idea that there is actually not a mandate to draft a quarterback in the first round, I just want to let you know about the Patreon, patreon.com slash Raiders. What do you get with that if you sign up? Link in the description below. For $5 a month, and you can cancel at any time, you get every video, I, every video I post early. You get exclusive content that's never before seen on YouTube and never will be on YouTube. You get your name at the end of the credits. You get behind-the-scenes stuff. For an upgraded fee, you get ad-free content, and you get monthly YouTube advice from yours truly. That is patreon.com slash allboardraiders. I believe we just hit 25 members, and these are all my executive producers. I think they're going to be over here, and you'll see their names at the end of the videos. If you want to be one of those people, sign up. Link is in the description below. No mandate to draft a quarterback in this year's draft. What's our BS meter saying about this? Because I need to pull up the report on this, actually. This is Bleacher Report. So, uh, ESPN's Paul Gutierrez, a team source, told him Raiders owner Mark Davis is issuing a mandate to draft the general. Uh, Let me start this whole thing over. It's the brain fog from having a sickness. According to ESPN's Paul Gutierrez, a team source said 
that rumors of Raiders owner Mark Davis issuing a mandate to general manager Tom Telesco to take a quarterback are, quote, simply not true. University of Colorado quarterback Shador Sanders has heavily been linked to the Raiders, especially posting a video of Allegiant Stadium with the quotes legendary. We all saw the video, right? At 2-10, and 10, the Raiders have one of the worst records in the NFL. They will be picking a quarterback, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Do I believe that there is no mandate to take a quarterback? I do. I do believe that. I do not think Mark Davis is the type of owner to meddle. I will say this. If, you know, there's no world in which this was going to happen. But if Brock Bowers this year completely shit the bed, I think Mark Davis would have said, this is the guy we took instead of trading up for Michael Penix or Bo Nix. What is going on, Tom Telesco? Mark Davis is not an owner that will meddle. He will give you the keys to the car, and he will say, drive me to freedom. Like it or not, that's the way he is. And I would say I do like that. I, I, you know, He might not always hire the best people, but he does not meddle, and I don't want an owner that meddles. And he's willing to spend the money and make big moves, and I appreciate that about him. That's why sometimes people complain about Mark Davis. It's like, bro, we could have like the Browns owner who guaranteed Deshaun Watson $200 million. You want that instead? Like The grass is always greener with what you're thinking about with Mark Davis. <clears throat> So I think the Brock Bowers of it all and Tom Telesco gaining the trust of Mark Davis with the Jackson Power Johnson take and with the DJ Glaze selection, he's shown that he knows how to draft, right? I do think there's no mandate. However, I would be stupid to tell you that they are not heavily scouting all these guys to potentially take their next big franchise quarterback it's been a long time since we drafted a quarterback in the first round does anybody know who it is i'll stop you right there it's jamarcus russell didn't turn out so well right uh here's what i'll say about the mandate okay obviously you would never want a mandate that can set a franchise back years you need to make sure that you're drafting the best person for your franchise right now that might not even be the best player available but it's the best person for your franchise right now I will say this, Derek Carr, 2014, that was a great draft, right? We went Khalil Mack, Derek Carr, Gabe Jackson, right? Gabe, Gabe Jackson, is that right? Why, why does that name sound not right? Gabe Jackson, that's his name, right? Three great picks. Khalil Mack was the first selection, and then we went Derek Carr in the second round. Early second round, Derek Carr ended up being the best quarterback of that draft class. I mentioned that in last week's pod. If you watch the conference championship games that went on yesterday, you've got guys like Quinn Ewers and Carson Beck who looked just terrible. You've got guys like Drew Aller and Dylan Gabriel who showed big-time flashes. You've got a Jalen Milrow who could be a Lamar Jackson 2.0, right? So hypothetically, if you have the third pick in the draft and Cam Ward's gone and Shador Sanders is gone or – one of them is there, and you don't think they're the right guy. There is a world in which you draft Travis Hunter, or you draft Genty, or you draft the lineman, best player available, Abdul Carter. And then you take Drew Aller or Dylan Gabriel in the second round, or whoever, whoever you want in the second round, Jackson Dart, Jalen Milrow, and you let him battle it out with whoever you sign, you know, veteran-wise, and Aiden O'Connell. Because if you remember, the year that we drafted Derek Carr, who was supposed to be the starting quarterback that season? Does anyone remember? Comment below. I'm going to wait a couple seconds. I want it to build up. Don't cheat. Don't look. I want you to type the name of the quarterback who was supposed to start that season. He got hurt in the preseason. Derek Carr took the job. He played great in that third preseason game, and the rest was history. Do you have it? I will tell you right now, it was Pro Bowl quarterback Matt Schaub. I don't know if they traded for him and signed him in the off se- or signed him in the off season that year, but Houston Texas quarterback him and Andre Johnson he was a multiple time Pro Bowler he was going to start that season, hurt his elbow in the preseason. Derek Carr started the rest of his history, so there is a world, and, and we were coming off a season with Matt McGloin and Terrell Pryor at quarterback, so there is a world in which. We draft somebody in the second round to sit, which I'm pro-sit, by the way. I'm pro-let this guy learn the game before playing. And I think not mandating somebody is the smart thing to do. Now, if you think your guy's there, then take him. But if he's not there, 
that's the way to go. I think best player available, draft the quarterback in the second round because I'm not completely sold on Shador Sanders or Cam Ward to be the franchise guy. I'd rather take a chance on a big-time upside like Aller or Milrow, to be honest with you. And then, depending on how Aiden plays, let Aiden roll out next season and we'll see what happens. But I, I just think, like, it's real risky to just be like, quarterback has to be, has to be. It's like, well, why? Uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I've heard from scouts in the league, not I've heard personally, but they've said out loud, this is not a great quarterback draft class. It's not last year. Michael Penix, the last quarterback taken in the first round, is better than all these guys. So the idea that it's like, well, we need a quarterback. It's like, all right, but there might not be one for the pick that we do have. So we need to take a deep breath with that. Which brings me to my next topic here. I had a lot of people say when I was frustrated that Aiden didn't play right away. And after the Chiefs game, I was I was – I was uh, annoyed that he didn't get to start the whole season because I wanted to see what he had. And a lot of people said, okay, he had one good game. Well, he has, an, he has the rest of the season to prove if he could be the guy. Of course, a report comes out today from Vic Tafer that says about Aiden O'Connell, I, and I quote, this is on RaidersBeat.com, I don't think it matters what Aiden does the rest of the way. He's not going to win the job for next year in these last five weeks. I think they'll bring somebody in, maybe draft and add a veteran guy. But they clearly know the quarterback is a big need, even with Aiden still in the mix. So to all those people that said, well, he's got the last five games to show. What did I say after the Chiefs game? This is not enough time to evaluate the situation, especially if they draft a rookie quarterback. It's not as if Aiden is some veteran that this kid can learn under. They're going to have to sign another guy if they draft a rookie quarterback. Don't have to sign someone either way. The problem is, and you want to say, if Aiden battles it out with Shador Sanders and Sam Darnold, and somehow Aiden is the best quarterback, I wouldn't see that being the case, but let's pretend. Let's just pretend. Aiden's the best quarterback. And you want to say, well, the best quarterback's going to get the job. That's not what happened this past offseason. They gave it to Gardner instead of Aiden. And if you want to say, well, that was just the Raiders being the Raiders, look at the 49ers. The 49ers had Jimmy Garoppolo, who took them to Super Bowls, and they said, this guy's not good enough. He can get you to Super Bowl. He can't win you one. So they traded their whole farm for Trey Lance. They were going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo in the offseason. Trey Lance was going to take over for Jimmy Garoppolo, right? They couldn't find a suitor for Jimmy Garoppolo because he might have been injured, whatever. So they held on to him, and they were going to go Trey Lance anyway, right? They gave Trey Lance the job, knowing damn well, not only was he not as good as Jimmy Garoppolo, He wasn't as good as their seventh-round draft pick that same year, Brock Purdy. There were reports that Kyle Shanahan thought Brock Purdy was the best player for this job. But when you trade everything to go get your guy, or when you lose a bunch of games like we did, you cannot tell your owner the guy that we drafted is not good enough to start. If you do that, you will get fired. So for everybody saying... Well, he's got the last five games to show, and then we'll draft someone, and the best guy's going to get the job. That's not how this works. Trey Lance was handed the keys. He played one game in a monsoon, and he didn't play well. He got hurt. Jimmy Garoppolo came in, won a bunch of games, won a bunch of games, excuse me, got hurt. Brock Purdy came in, took him to an NFC championship. Rest is history. Trey Lance is gone. Jimmy's gone. There needed to be two season-ending injuries for Brock Purdy to get a chance, and he was the best quarterback in that room. So for people saying initially, like, oh, if Aiden won the job, he wouldn't have started. That's not how it works. And if we draft somebody, and Tom Telesco and AP or whoever the coaches goes, whoops, Aiden's still better, they might just give the keys to Sanders anyway because that's the way the NFL crumbles. It's not a fair business, and people don't always make the right decisions. Sometimes if you take a big swing and draft somebody, if you lose a lot of games to put yourself in a position, That guy's just going to start. That's the way it is, right or wrong. That's the way it is. And it's unfortunate that if Aiden balls out these last five games, it might not matter because we went 6-11, and even though he wasn't the reason we lost any of those other games. And that's why it's frustrating. It's not frustrating because anybody thinks he's the next Joe Montana. It's frustrating because you cannot get a good read on this guy. Anybody that says they know how good he can be 10 years from now is lying to you or is dumb. 
I don't know what, which one is worse, but you can take that to the bank. Either way. That's just an unfortunate reality of the situation. He was he should have started. He didn't for whatever reason. Money gets it. Let's go. I don't know. <laughs> and now he's got five games that, according to Vic Taper, an insider in the building, doesn't really matter. Now he's not saying it does he's not gonna win him the job, but he could not lose the job, right? He could put himself in the mix with these last five games. It is just frustrating to think that that could be a mentality of the situation when this guy could be decent, right? So we'll see. Okay, so before I get into the comments that I have lined up here for, you know, the the questions and concerns that I had from the last video that we're going to get into here, a couple of comments. Make sure you're commenting away to get your responses potentially read on Wednesday's show. We're going to get into the Tampa Bay Bucks game a little bit. We're going to get into some predictions. So as I take this big drink of water, I want to hear your predictions for the Bucks game in the comments right now. Thank you. <clears throat> I got an ice cube in my mouth. That's bars. I think it's going to be a loss. I think it's a tough game. I think it's 10 a.m. body clock, which to me doesn't really matter, but people say it matters. Okay, whatever. It matters. Sure. Uh, this is a good football team, a team that's uh, probably more well-coached than us. They've got that Cohen kid who's coaching up Baker Mayfield to play pretty decent. They have Todd Bowles, who's a great defensive mind. And they've got a lot of great wide receiver schemes. And they've got the route tree from Mike Evans that is is pretty unstoppable. And Kate Otten, and they got Bucky Irvin running the ball. And they've got players on defense, too. I think this could be a tight one. 24-20 loss. If you're a betting person, man or woman, I would take Aiden's over. I got it at 237.5. I do think he's going to be winging the ball over the field, win, lose, or draw. He's going to throw for 250, 260. A couple touchdowns, maybe a couple picks. A couple things to keep an eye on. The reason why I think we might lose this game, uh, we are not healthy at the cornerback position. I don't know as of right now who is playing in terms of Nate Hobbs or Corian Bennett, but Mike Evans, who is sneaky, like one of the best receivers of all time, he has 10 straight 1,000-yard seasons and has won a Super Bowl. I guess a lock for a spout Hall of Famer. If you don't think so, you're insane. He might be beasting and feasting the whole time against our backups. The Cameron Richardson has not shown to be great so far, but he's kind of been thrown into the fire, and maybe this will be a coming-out game. I'm going to bet on Mike, Evan, Mike Evans over to Cameron Richardson. Keep an eye on how Aiden handles the blitz. I think he handled it masterfully against the Chiefs, which is another reason why he should have been starting ahead of Gardner Minshew, who can't handle the blitz to save his God-given life. Todd Bowles is probably going to throw everything at him. Now, if he doesn't blitz a lot in this game, that's because of the film last week to show you Aiden can throw it deep. Maybe we relax on the blitz a little bit because if we have single high coverage, he might pick us apart. So if the blitz comes, that shows you that Todd Bowles is not really afraid of Aiden, what he's able to do. If it doesn't come, it shows that, okay, they're saying, hey, Sincere McCormick beat us because Aiden O'Connell might be able to. 24-20, L. Um, but I think it's going to be a good game. It should be fun. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Obviously, I don't think we're going to kill them. And I don't think they're going to kill us. I think it's going to be a, another hard-fought loss, a competitive loss for the pro tank people, but Aiden are going to scare you again. Let's get into a couple of these comments before we get out of here. Last week, I picked out three comments. Uh, there's no mandate. There's that word again for how many that I pick. I'm just going to kind of let them rip and see where it goes from here. But the first comment I wanted to read is from Adrix116. That's two X's. That's two ones. I hope I... Adrix? Adrix. This person said, the difference is Norv Turner. If he and Scott think Aiden can run the offense successfully then that's what matters. It's not Gardner or Aiden. We had the Bears coordinator. Now we have Troy Aikman and Phillip Rivers. That's who North Turner was the coordinator for. Having his son was the only way to land his offense on this team. You ask Kelsey how he's always open. He says, Andy Reid, baby. That and Aiden's familiarity with the players we have makes it all work. It's that simple. Draft Travis Hunter as a shutdown corner and checkmate. I don't disagree with you. You know, every Wednesday we do on the train, off the train. I'm on the Turner train. I do not disagree at all. I don't know if it's Scott or Nerve that's getting us in a better position, but I've made it pretty clear that I'm A-OK -okay with drafting Travis Hunter and letting him ride with Aiden next year if they don't think Shador's the guy. 
and if they're prepared to take a quarterback in the second round, because I do think we should still draft a quarterback. So that's that's kind of where I am on that, and I wholeheartedly agree with you. Next comment comes from what does that say? Lex play smut. I feel like I read like an innuendo there. I'm gonna move on from it. Aiden controls his future right now. I don't know, does he? And if he can somehow look good in the Scott Turner offense and win three and four games, which we probably will ruin the Raiders' tank and give his career new light. I don't disagree with that. It also will force the Raiders to take a QB later like Milrow since Telesco only takes best players available. Personally, I hope this doesn't happen. That's the rub, isn't it? To, to lose or not to lose, that is the question. I've said it since day one. I, I totally understand the people that want to have the highest draft selection. However, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, and with this sickness that I have, I'm not guaranteed the next five minutes. That's a joke. It's like a cold or whatever. It might be the flu, but I'm fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I I don't want to lose. I want to win every game possible, and just because you have the first overall pick doesn't guarantee you have the best quarterback in the draft. Look at this past quarterback draft. I think Jane Daniels, Drake May, Bo Nix, and Penix are all better than Caleb Williams at this point. Maybe not Michael Penix, but you get my point. All that to say... I do think Tom Telesco is best player available, and I do think taking the quarterback in the second round, like how, like maybe Jalen Milrow, is what they're thinking. So I don't disagree with that either. Last comment comes from Night Stalker sixty five. Weird name, but we're gonna move on from that one as well. This person says, "Let's not forget the job Joe Philbin has done or is doing with the line." Two exclamation points. It looks way better. Four exclamation points. It does look way better. Now, is that Joe Philbin? Is that the line just being able to mesh together, or is that all the above? It's probably all the above, right? Uh, who was the line coach? Uh, Rick Scangarilla, or was he the quarterback coach? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Point being, it does look way better. And, you know, Gardner Minshew didn't really have the best offensive line to play with, although Aiden, in this last game against the Chiefs, was able to maneuver the pocket in a way that we haven't seen before. And I do think he is able to get the right protections in place, which is also making the line look better. So I think it's the continuity. It's the younger guys playing together, right? This is the third week in a row we've had the same five linemen, which is not great because it's week 14 or whatever. (coughs) Is that the first cough in the whole podcast? It's pretty impressive. And I do think Aiden is making them look better with the way he's being able to play football. And people said, if Aiden's back there, he's going to get smoked. And it's like, not if he gets the ball out quick. That's what people got to understand. The quarterback has a lot to do with how the line works. It's not the end-all, be-all, but it is part of it. Okay, we got through it. I survived. I'm going to go get a lozenge. Make sure we are joining the Discord. Link is in the description below. All Aboard Raiders Discord. Join that Patreon, patreon.com slash Raiders, And make sure we're hitting that like button and comment in a way. Like I said, I'm going to read some comments next week on Wednesday. Please be sure to subscribe. It's free out to on the charts to you guys. I love you. I said that weird. And i see you next time.